guys. So, awesome morning here. A little sh slightly disappointed. Supposed to be going out sending it wide with a mate today, uh, but he had some stuff pop up, so we couldn't do that. So, plans changed. I'm in the little tinny and gonna try and get myself a big GT still, because, you know, that's what I was picturing for like the last week leading in. I'm like a kid before Christmas with a trip like that. I haven't been able to sleep properly, getting all my gear ready. Fishermen will know what I'm talking about, like checking all your lures, tying all your knots, getting all your rods sorted, ready for this big, big day out. Um, so, yeah, so obviously that's not happening. So, um, so I still want to get the big GT, so that's the game plan. Uh, and if I can tick that box off, um, I'll then see if I can maybe get something to eat. Uh, like a small, small trevally or coral trout or something like that. We'll see how we go. Sun is just poking up from behind the hill. Conditions look pretty good. Let's see how we go. Okay, so for you fishermen out there, using, I don't know, about a 180 mil floating stick bait, 150 pound leader, and 80 pound main line. And this is like a little reefy area where there's a massive big bommie on the edge. And so sometimes the big GTs just cruise around that bommie. So we'll see if anyone's home. And there's bait jumping everywhere, so. Sounds good, it looks fishy. Next spot is another little reef system. Um, I don't get many here. I actually hardly get any GTs here, but I was on the way past and thought it's probably worth throwing a couple of lures. Uh, when the season's right, I get a lot of Spanish mackerel here. Uh, but yeah, we'll see if there's any GTs around. spot so I reckon this is one of those spots where like the people in the village over here see me out here in this little boat thinking what's this idiot doing fishing just in here but I've caught some mega GTs here like I've hooked stuff that I haven't been able to stop and it's cut me off on the reef uh, biggest I've landed here I don't know in the 15 to 20 kilo range um, but it's hard if you, it, it's like a you know it's right into the reef where you got to cast so if you hook something up you sort of got to try and either drag it out if there's two of you in the boat if there's one of you i don't know it's just like flipping a coin sort of thing so yeah we'll see how we go and hopefully i don't lose the incredible hulk i love this green <laughs> this green popper the last session i the last session i did with this green popper with my mate neil um i caught like six massive gts in 90 minutes like 15 to 25 kilos um, all on that which is like a cheapo just a cheapo standard standard sort of hooks, like nothing fancy about it. Um, but man, it was killing the fish. So let's have a couple of pops here. Damn. I guess if you're gonna catch no fish, it's good to be in a beautiful place still. And it doesn't get much more beautiful than that, hey? So I used to work, used to work as a cabinet maker. Used to do a lot of stuff on building sites and everything. And uh, yeah, nothing quite like this, right? Showing up to work every day, and you're just looking at this stunning countryside. All of that—that's green there. It's awesome because it's coming back. Um, 
after the cycling Yasa, which is you know only a month or so ago, that was brown. There wasn't like you can still see some bare trees in that there, but there wasn't a leaf on anything here, man. It was like bare, just destruction. Um, some of the poor villagers just copped it big time. It was just yeah, it's been devastating actually. And that's why the fishing the fishing hasn't really been the same since so hopefully that recovers over time but i think what i'm going to have to do because we had a lot of rain last night so there's a river it's a river out over here so these mountains come down you've got mountains over there and you've got this river valley there and so that breeze that's coming there now um that's sort of like the morning cold air comes off the mountains and you get this gentle offshore which sometimes gets a little bit more than gentle like this morning but as the sun gets higher and it warms up i reckon this will flatten off um, and uh, yeah, it should be good, but there's a, obviously the river comes out there and we had heaps of rain last night. And so, I don't know if you can see, the water visibility's not all that crash hot. So I might just keep sending it around this way and just see if I can find some clearer water. Um, and then, uh, yeah, still, the goal is still to get a big GT. Just, I need it. So this is another, I don't know if it's a big bommy or a small reef or what the difference is, but there are fish everywhere. Let's put this down. So we got plenty of bait fish. So I'm gonna throw the popper, see what we can get. Let's check it out. On these days where there's nothing happening, when a fish does hit, it really does scare the shit out. Something's boiling over there. Oh, it's a turtle. It's a little turtle. Oh, this sucks. But, it's fishing, eh? Well, I think I have to rethink, regroup, maybe go for a swim, hit the reset button. Yeah, this sucks. So I was just on my way for a swim for the, to hit the reset button and uh, come across this wicked little patch of reef here. And there's actually something working up some bait over there. So definitely, definitely have to throw a couple of poppers at that. Let's do it. Fishing is very very slow so definitely going for the reset gonna go for a swim cool off because it's getting freaking hot it's like uh, 10 to 9 in the morning and it's already like steaming so yeah swim sounds like a good idea How nice is this water? This is crazy.
Oh man. That is amazing. Oh, I honestly can't believe how bad the fishing is today. We've got new moon. Plenty of bait fish around. Obviously structure and current. But fish are not playing games. So I don't know, change of plans maybe. Maybe I'll just go to a few deeper spots now. See if I can jig jig around and uh, like jig deeper and maybe get maybe get something for dinner. I don't really want to leave here, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Alright, so there's been a change of plans. The GTs just are not playing the game. So, see if we can jig something up here and uh, get some dinner. This spot can be a bit dodgy though, because sometimes there's heaps of barracuda here, and the barracuda just snip you off. Jigs. The frustrating end. So I got barracuda and the other barracuda's eating it man! Holy shit! This is sick! That other barracuda wants it. Alright, so not going home empty handed. Look at this big fella, just cruising around. You waiting mate, you waiting to come and get Sala's dinner. Let's see if I can film these guys underwater. Where'd they go? Yeah. Oh, don't like the camera. What about you? Well, there's obviously plenty of barracuda around and <laughs> I actually said that, that you can get snipped here often, there can be some barracuda here. Um, I got this one, I don't know whether to risk it, drop the lure again. There's there's heaps of bait fish down there, so you know, hopefully there's a little trevally or a cod or something. Um, my girls don't really like barracuda, um, but Sala, our housekeeper, loves it. So, uh, so I'll keep that one and I'll give that to her. Um, that was crazy, man. That other... Well, that's a big fish, and that other one trying to eat it. But, all right, we'll drop down and see how we go. So I dropped one more time at that other spot with those big barracuda there, and no hook, man. Snipped off. So I'm at another spot now. There's heaps of fish here. So just quickly switch up the jig, drop down, and see if we can get some dinner. Alright, we found the lump. We're on the lump, we found some fish. Let's see if anyone's hungry. There is a huge school of bait below me. Huge school of bait. Wow. 
story of my day today. Bait fish everywhere and nothing in here. Man, I so wanted to have a cook up on the beach tonight. Fish, cook on the fire, press some marshmallows. It's not the same if you've got to get fish out of the freezer. Got ya! <laughs> got hitting the way down. Just as I'd almost mentally given up. Cod. Get the there. Yes, it's a cod. We are eating fish tonight. Woo -hoo -hoo! Fresh fish, baby. Perfect little cod for dinner tonight. This is gonna taste amazing. We'll go back, obviously it's still pretty early, so <laughs> kids are still in school, doing classes. Um, so I'll go back, uh, get this in the fridge, get everything sorted, uh, get the fire going, and then, um, yeah, see you guys back on the beach for a cook up of some fresh Kawakawa, Fiji style. So, change of plans, it has just started pelting down. That little one shower that was coming across the bay turned out was backed up by a lot. So, no chance of doing a fire tonight. So I'm still gonna do the, make a damper uh, and I'm gonna cook it in the oven um, and we'll cook the fish on the barbecue. So, this is how I make damper. If you've got a better recipe, chuck it in the comments, let me know. So I just use a bit of self-raising flour. You probably don't have to, probably don't have to sift it, but here, like we end up with so many weird things, like even in airtight containers and stuff, so many weird things living in our flour. So I just make sure I get those out. So I don't know what I've done there. Three cups. Three cups of self-raising flour. Ooh, yeah. Then what I do is I get butter. And I cut it into like small cubes. Salt, pinch of salt. So I cut the butter into like cubes like this. It's a bit messy making damper, but it's worth it. All right. Then what we want to do is wash our hands. Okay, hands washed. Now, we just literally mash the butter into the flour with our hands and the flour sort of ends up going like breadcrumbs. So it goes a little, little bit of a yellow hint from the butter um, and turns into like, almost feels like breadcrumbs. So it takes a while, I don't know, five minutes. So that's, that's basically it. Super simple, self-raising flour, pinch of salt, butter. Uh, then basically, like I said, mix it up. So it's sort of like, like breadcrumbs. And then basically what I do, get a beer. And put a bit of beer in. Man, it smells good.
Tem que ver. Give it a bit of a stir up. Then I get my hands in. Some people make that damper super sticky. I don't know if I'm just being precious or what, but I don't like it super sticky because it's a pain in the ass to work with. Gets all over your hands, gets everywhere. And you know, let's face it, if you're doing this and you're out camping, he wants to be covered in damper dough. Man, if you could smell this. It smells freaking wicked. So that's looking pretty good. Cool. Then we get the leftover butter. Spray. So obviously, obviously if we were doing this in the campfire, what I what I do is I get, uh, if it's just me and my mates, like not with precious kids and a precious wife, um, just like that, you, like you, you get this in shape, like this, you know, make it like a nice, bready roll kind of shape and then literally i just chuck that in the coals like you get some coals out of the fire sprinkle it on the ground sit that on top and then sprinkle some coals on top um coals it's not it doesn't end up gritty or anything like that um goes perfectly crusty in that on the outside you just dust off the um the coals and the ash after um and it's ready to rock uh but when it's like beck and the girls um I like, I'll get foil and I'll put like a bit of butter, like this, what I'm doing here. Um, just smear a bit of butter on the foil so the foil doesn't stick, like so. And then I get my damper, chuck that on, and then I get the knife and I get all fancy. Cut a couple of lines, I believe they call this scoring. So we score it, and then I get some more of that butter, and I just spread it on top. Probably not the healthiest thing in the world. A lot of butter, salt, flour, beer, all the major food <laughs> groups. But uh, man, as a sometimes food, this tastes amazing. All right, now I'm gonna stick that in the oven for probably, and usually in the fire, it's usually probably 40 minutes in the fire. So I'll probably do the same in the oven, probably 180, 200, 40, 50 minutes. Let's see how it goes. Hopefully it turns out as good as it does in the fire. Okay, so with the fish on the barbecue, it's uh, super simple. I just score the fish along here <clears throat> put a bit of salt, a bit of butter, and a bit of garlic on it, and then I just chuck it straight on the hot plate. Um, and yeah, usually tastes pretty good. So we'll see how we go. I've already obviously gutted this and scaled it. And I grabbed the bluntest knife in the world just because I like a challenge. Nothing ever worthwhile came easy, and nothing that came easy was worthwhile. Oh my god. Bit of salt. Now, don't get yourself in trouble and use the knife on the fish and then go back in the butter. Whew. Garlic. Bit of that garlic on there. Bit of garlic in the guts, and that's how she's looking. I'll put it straight, I like a flat hot plate on my barbecue. I'll put it just on the flat plate like that. We'll come back to it when I flip it. All right, time to flip. Check that out. So 
So this damper is out and wacky do. Look at that. Holy cow. This is done. Pass and damper. Damper is done. Damper setting the table. That looks good, but you should smell it. Oh. How good? So good. So good. Okay, let's get the first part of the fish. All right, tell me. What's the bird? Put it here. Oh okay. my God. Small one. That fish is so good. I want to see the color. Oh my God. The damper is amazing. Oh my God. Best damper. So, Green stuff. thanks for watching guys. If you've liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Green stuff. <laughs> Jump in the comments, let us know what you want to see more of. And uh, yeah, we're going to start trying to pump out a video of, I guess, what it's like to live in Fiji, totally immersed in the environment, the culture, uh, and everything that's, that's Fiji. So, thanks for watching guys. Have a good one. Yay!